What's up guys? So spring is here. The weather is just It is nasty outside, it's gray, it's raining, then it's sunny, then it's raining. It's springtime in Seattle. Wildflowers are starting to bloom. And you wanna get out there and shoot. So here's a little tip, trick, video that might help you out a little bit with your wildflowers. I always suggest focus stacking. And what I mean by that is you'll have you know, roughly three to seven images, depending on how far the depth of the scene goes, but you'll shoot the first bunch of flowers, second, third, fourth, so on, until you basically hit infinity on your lens, and ultimately putting them all together to get one sharp image all the way through. I know that sounds kind of crazy. It's a lot easier than you think, and I'll show you how you do that in Photoshop. The algorithm that they have written for focus stacking your images works really well, if you shoot your photos right. And what I mean by that is, sometimes there can be a breeze or anything like that, and that might move some of the flowers. You're gonna have to really take quite a few sequences of photo stacking. And a little tip I suggest, when I take all five images, after I do that, I'll take a photo of my hand. And that sort of bookmarks, I felt good that there wasn't any breeze, and that I got through my focal ranges quickly and efficiently to where I should probably work on those ones and get those together. It's not always a guarantee, but when you get home and you look through all your files, you'll see, okay, that's my bookmark. Let's take those five photos right before that. There's, I know there's the star button. You can favor things and stuff like that. I, it's just an old habit from skateboarding. When you'd film and your buddy was trying to trick 40 times, by the time they stomp it, put your hand over the camera. And then when you get home, you can just kind of fast forward through the video Till you see your hand, that's when you know they stomped the trick, just a little bookmark. So the photo we're gonna work on today, it's actually I shot two spots, two compositions in this park, and one of them, I like the flowers, because it had just rained right at sunset, so they had some nice water droplets on it and the details were perfect. However, I'm not gonna edit that photo in this video today because there was a breeze. I didn't quite get the focus stacking correct in camera, so I had to manually do a lot of it and it took a lot of time and I really don't want to re-edit that photo. So I'm sorry, but we're going to work on another one. Let's jump in Photoshop. Let's put this photo together. I'm also going to take it into Lightroom and do some final touches. Then we'll get it on Instagram. All right, let's get to it. For sake of time, I already went ahead and ran the focus stacking. Uh, to do that, what you would do is just select all five of your images or however many you take and you're going to go over to edit and you're gonna do, first you're gonna auto align them and then you're gonna auto blend and it takes and it asks you, uh, do you wanna stack the images? So you just go ahead and do that and it makes a mask and just finds all the sharpest points, puts it together and makes it a nice single image. So this is where we'll start. First things first, what I like to do is grab everything and I'm gonna hit Command G and I'm just gonna put everything in a group uh, this will help clean up the timeline. So also I'm going to copy this guy, duplicate it. Let's get it out of the group real quick. I know that got a little weird. Looking at the photo, we're going to go over to Camera Raw. In Camera Raw, I'm just noticing the highlights are a little high. So I'm going to start bringing those down a little bit, kind of recover this sky. Uh, definitely a hot spot where the sun was setting. So. 
That looks pretty good. I might bring up the shadows just a touch. It's kind of about there. So I think that looks pretty good. Just want to kind of even everything out because we're going to do some uh, some other edits. Now let's go ahead and put what's called an Orton effect. And what that does is it gives kind of a dreamy look to the photo. Uh, we're going to go to Filter, Blur. And we're going to go to Gaussian Blur. And one rule of thumb for this, and I don't know where I heard it, but apparently you should set your radius close to what the megapixels of your camera is. I'm not sure if that's a real thing or not. This is just something I've, I've heard and followed for years. So usually I run about 33 to 36 radius, depending, but I shoot with the Nikon D800, that's a 36 megapixel camera. That's where I run it with that. Uh, if I shoot with one of my other cameras, it's like a 24 megapixel, I'll probably run this radius around that. So just a kind of rule of thumb that I like to use for setting the blur for this Orton effect. Okay, so now we have a blurry image. Let's fix it. Um, we're gonna come over to our curves and we're gonna create a curves layer. And we're just gonna do a nice S. We're just gonna create contrast with this. So as you can see, you kind of play with it a little. Kind of, that looks pretty good. You don't wanna get too carried away, but at the same time, uh, this is not a destructive layer, so it can be fixed later. All right, so that looks good. And what I'm gonna do is hold down Alt Option on the Mac, kind of float around, and that's gonna allow me to merge these two layers. And I'm just gonna drop, I've selected this one, I'm just gonna drop the opacity to about 18%, 18 to 20. 18 usually looks pretty good. Cause we're just going for subtle. This is just a subtle, let's maybe take it up to 20. Okay, so what you can see here is it just adds just a little glow, kind of that dreamy effect. And it looks really nice on the flowers and stuff, so. All right, and the third step to this is going to be uh, we're going to do what's basically stamping. We're going to photo do a photo merge, and you're going to hold down Shift, Alt Option key, and Command key then E. And what that does is it just takes basically a stamp of everything visible and creates a layer. And again, another way to kind of keep from being too destructive. That way, if I was to mess up, I still have these guys and I can go back and adjust them accordingly. So this step here, we're gonna go to filter. We're gonna go down to other. We're gonna do a high pass filter. And essentially what this is doing is, is adding sharpening to the edges. And I know we just blurred it and now we're sharpening it, but you'll see the result here. So we'll go ahead and I keep the radius about three on this. Uh, you don't, you want a little detail, but you don't want to really bring it too much. So three is good. Let that load. Okay. So now it's gray. What do you do? We're going to, um, overlay this layer. So I'm going to drop down to overlay and there we have it. So I'll kind of zoom in and show you a little bit of what that did here. So again, it's very subtle, but if you see like on the buildings, just kind of resharpens things a little, but you still have that, that glow with your, uh, Orton effect. So all in all, I think that looks pretty good. Just dreamy enough, but not too surreal. We're just gonna go ahead and do some dodging with the uh, flowers. We're gonna add a little more light and glow to it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to layer. We're gonna go to new layer and we're gonna set the mode to overlay and make sure that you have 50% gray. So we have that and now we're gonna come over, select our brush tool, white, and we're gonna set the opacity to about 30% and the flow let's do that about 40 now I'm using a Wacom tablet and that has the pen tool which is pressure sensitive so it's a lot more like a like a brush um, if you're using your mouse you might want to play with these settings a little bit to kind of help you not overdo it because this is just gonna be soft subtle 
movement. So let's go ahead and we'll go in here, kind of zoom in, and just kind of start working on parts of the flower here. So as you can see, it just kind of adds a little bit more light and you know you can play with where the sunlight's coming in. And I'm gonna speed through it and I'll show you the end result. Just adds a little more pop to the flowers, kind of gives more of a natural light coming through. Now I'm gonna take this photo over to Lightroom because there's a few things that I like to do in Lightroom a little more. Okay, let's try and recover a little more of this sky. So I'm gonna throw on a graduated filter. Just kind of drop that there. And if you hover over, red indicates where the effect will be applied. So let's just bring down the highlights a little more try to recover that sky just a little bit more and maybe bring up the shadows a little okay let's bring down the mid-tones I'm gonna to come down to the curve adjustment I'm just kinda of, still trying to darken the image just to kinda of make it a little more dramatic with Lightroom and probably one of the reasons I enjoy editing in Lightroom a lot is I like using these radial filters and what I do is I select the filter and I'll come down and do invert now what that's going to do so I'll put the filter on here kind of adjust because I'm gonna work on these flowers so by inverting it you're working inside if you do not have it inverted that'll be the outside area affected so I'll do the invert that way I can really select an an area range in the photo and start adjusting that let's bring up the whites just working on these flowers here so that's just kind of making them pop a little more maybe bring up the shadows just a little bit you can adjust to the size you want and again look at the area affected you can bring up the shadows a lot really changes the look of the the photo now I want to I want to preserve the detail here however I don't want it to be too excessive in the photo that, that becomes too distracting mostly just want to work on these flowers bring the highlights down a little bit so I'm just doing very minor adjustments in Lightroom and now I want to adjust the color range a little bit and there's a couple ways to do that you have either your HSL your hue saturation and luminance um, this will allow you to really customize your photo uh, kind of personalize it more with color tones that that you like there's also you can come down to camera calibration and this is in Lightroom where you do like a teal and orange kind of look so you can bring your your blues down you bring up your reds to kind of create that that teal and orange so I adjust this just a little bit sometimes depending on the color range in the photo okay now I'll come back up to my HSLs now I'm gonna bring down the yellows just a little and then I'm going to that blue is still a little strong there I can kind of bring that down a little bit Okay. kind of adjusting the hue on this blue here Add a little more orange to the yellows a little bit of red to the orange so now that we've darkened up the image more let's go ahead and see one thing again with these radials now I can come back and, and adjust this a little more so that got a little too dark as I started bringing things down and like I said you can kinda really focus on just one area and get those all right okay another radial filter now I'm gonna do what kind of an atmospheric light leak here so what I'll do is 
Obviously the sun's back in that range. And again, I have it inverted. So it's gonna just be this area that's affected. And I'm gonna bring up the exposure just a little. And that's just, that's just bringing that light back in. And here's a little trick. So on the dehaze slider, and we're gonna go negative, and it just puts a little bit of atmosphere in there. You can get a lot, a little, and again, now you can really adjust where you want this to go. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to um, warm it up just a little too. And now, now that I'm seeing this little bit here where that kind of doesn't look so natural, I'm going to bring down the blacks just a little. And that's the nice part with these using these radial filters, and it's just fun to kind of try new things. See, I can really adjust where I want that light to be. And let's say you don't like that, you can just go ahead and delete it. So play with those. Now let's add a vignette to it. Again, radial. And put that in the center. Now it was inverted, so back to that. Now, as you can see, the outside area is what's going to be affected. So I'm just gonna bring down the exposure a little bit here. Just start working on a vignette. A little more manual process. There is an option for vignetting on here. However, I like a little more control. That way I can really keep the light where I want it to be. I like to zoom out when I'm doing this too. It kind of gives you the whole spectrum a little better than when you're in too tight. So let's see, let's hover over. It kind of shows where our effect is. Now that we have our vignette on here, let's just kind of readjust where this is on these flowers. Bring up the highlights a little. I'm just keeping in mind, I just want these flowers to pop, so I just continue to keep coming back to this. There we have it. So let's look at before, and let's look at after. All right, there you go. So just a quick little workflow of what I like to do. Um, hopefully you guys got something from that. Let me know in the comments below if you guys like the first image with the larger petals and the first composition or the one we just edit today better. And if you guys like this type of content, please like and subscribe. You can hit that subscribe button right here and I will see you next time. Bye.